Picture this, you're on a roller coaster. You've just gone down the first drop and are careening towards the next element. It doesn't look like your typical airtime hill. What is it? As a train enters the element, you can feel your body being pushed heavily down into the seat. It becomes difficult to hold your head up straight. At the apex, you look around and notice that your world is upside down. For a moment, you feel weightless. This weightless feeling turns back into you being squished into your seat. The heavy feeling subsides and you realize just then, you've been through an inversion. Roller coaster inversions are the favorite type of element for many people out there, myself included. There's nothing quite like traveling upside down, sometimes at 40 miles an hour or more. There's the weightless feeling that some of them can give you, and some of them even feel like they're testing the effectiveness of their restraints. So what is an inversion? Well, an inversion is an element on a roller coaster that either flips upside down completely or twists beyond 135 degrees in relation to the roll of the train. If you want some background for this video, I highly recommend you check out my recent video where I talk about everything related to roller coaster elements. Today's video is going to be specifically focusing on inversions. These elements come in many different shapes and sizes, but there are at least four main forms inversions follow. These would include loop based inversions, corkscrew based inversions, roll based inversions, and finally combo inversions. Lastly, for any of the odd ones out, I'll stick those in their own category. One final note, inversions sometimes are classified as one element even if they are made up of several other elements. This can sometimes mean that a single inversion actually includes two points that invert riders. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and enter the upside down world of roller coaster inversions. Let's start out with arguably the most simple and well-known inversion, loops. These inversions were some of the earliest attempted ways to flip riders upside down. They take you up, around, and back down again. These are prevalent on a huge variety of roller coasters by many different manufacturers. Loops can come in many different shapes and sizes, with the most common type being clothoid loops. This name is derived from the elongated shapes that they can sometimes have. This profiling is designed so that the amount of force being applied towards rider is not too uncomfortable. Some manufacturers do experiment with the shaping of these loops, such as with mock rides and the circular loops. To start with our first modification of these, we have the inclined loop. This looks like a vertical loop, but tilted slightly to one side or another. These are most commonly found on stand-up coasters built by B&M. Next, we have the pretzel loop. These are mainly found on B&M flying coasters and act like an upside down loop of sorts. The inversion, rather than happening at the top of the element, is at the bottom. These elements can provide for a ton of positive g-forces at their lowest point. An honorable mention here would be interlocking loops. These elements can be present on a single coaster at different parts of its course or even two separate coasters. It is simply two vertical loops that intersect one another. To wrap this part all up, a loop is an inversion that is a 360 degree circle that is aligned vertically. The next oldest style of inversion we have are corkscrews. Pioneered by aero developments in the late 1980s, these inversions act as a loop that has been stretched out so its exit and entry points are much farther distance away from one another. On many of their coasters, corkscrews would often come in pairs. In the present day, corkscrews are just one element that sit in the toolbox of many roller coaster designers. Many of the different variants of corkscrews come down to sequencing them slightly differently. For instance, we have the cutback. Rather than being a full and complete corkscrew, a cutback takes two half corkscrews and puts them together at the top, so that they act almost like an overbank turn. Next, we have interlocking corkscrews. These are present mainly on B&M looping coasters and have one corkscrew going through another. There often is a turnaround in between the two inversions, which leads from one to the other. To sum corkscrews up, these are inversions that rotate 360 degrees perpendicular to the track and feature a stretched out spiral shape. 
Aircraft can change their positions in three main directions, pitch, yaw, and roll. Pitch goes up like loops, yaw goes left and right, and roll twists around. Rolls are one of the most prevalent style of inversion found on modern roller coasters and are modified in many different shapes. First, let's start with the most basic form of a roll, a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. These inversions are the all-encompassing term for rolls. These rotate around an axis that can be centralized at different points. Barrel rolls are kind of like rectangles. Every roll, be it a zero-g roll, heartline roll, or inline twist, are barrel rolls. Just how every square is a rectangle. Let's start with the first subcategory then, which are heartline rolls. These rotate 360 degrees along an axis centered on the heart line of the rider. These are designed so that riders do not experience too much whip when the train enters these elements. A slight modification of this would be the inline twist. Instead of rotating around the axis centered on the heart line of riders, this element rotates along an axis centered on the middle of the track. These are less common than heart line rolls, and usually are present at points on a roller coaster's course when it is traveling much slower. This is done to prevent discomfort for riders. Sometimes a roll can be considered special based solely on where it is located on a course. One example of this is the JoJo roll. This type of inversion is placed right outside of the station. It has riders traversing slowly through a roll that provides a ton of hang time. Fun fact, these elements got their name because the head of construction for Hydra the Revenge at Dorney Park, Joe Green, wanted it to be named as such. The next modification of barrel rolls are zero-g rolls. These inversions are heartline rolls that take the place of airtime hills. They are formed in the shape of a hill and are designed to give riders a feeling of being weightless. Now let's start talking about some of the other simple modifications of rolls. Currently only present on Vekoma Flying Dutchman models, we have the fly to lie and lie to fly. These elements are a half of a roll, spinning riders 180 degrees. As their names imply, these elements face riders either up or down from their laying down position. Next, we have the barrel roll down drop. This inversion is found on coasters built by RMC and takes the place of a traditional drop. These feature a barrel roll that levels out into a steep drop. The first half of this element is like a normal barrel roll and it finishes off with the second downwards facing portion of a zero G roll. Don't worry, we're just getting started with inversions that have names longer than some of my run-on sentences. This next mouthful is the twisted inline rollback. This rare inversion is a roll that ends in a spike. Present only on shuttle coasters, the train traverses through this element both backwards and forwards. To finish off this section, we have the zero-g stall. This roll starts out twisting riders upside down, then keeping them upside down, and flipping right side up as the track begins to slope back downwards. These elements can provide for even more hang time than some of the previously mentioned inversions. They are a personal favorite of mine. So to sum rolls up, these are elements that rotate 360 degrees around an axis centralized somewhere on the train itself. Now that we've covered the three main types of inversions, let's talk about combo inversions. These inversions are usually made up of at least two partial inversions out of the three main groups. These, as expected, combine these two elements in interesting and unique ways. One of the most fundamental combo inversions, in my opinion, is the Cobra Roll. This element starts out with a half loop which transitions into a half corkscrew. After this, it rises back up into a half corkscrew, then finishes it all out with another half loop. This returns riders in a direction opposite from which they entered. Next, we have the Sea Serpent. This is very similar to a Cobra Roll, except the corkscrew is one continuous twist that moves in a singular direction. When riders exit the second half loop on this element, they are still facing in the same direction from which they entered. If you took a cobra roll and prevented it from leveling out in between the corkscrews, you have a banana roll. This element transitions from the half loop into a section of track that is like a flattened corkscrew, just without leveling out. So what happens when you combine a half loop and a roll? The Immelman starts out with a half loop, then levels out at the top with a roll. Sometimes this roll goes straight from the top of the inversion, and other times it may turn left or right. 
If you took an Immelman and enter it from the opposite side, you have yourself a dive loop. This is where a roller coaster enters a roll and finishes out the element by going downwards through a half loop. Just like the inclined vertical loop, we also have the inclined dive loop. This element is less so an inversion, but takes a similar path to a dive loop. Instead of going completely upside down, it usually tilts somewhere around 45 degrees and finishes with half an inclined loop. To continue the trend of including a half loop, we have the bat wing. These are like cover rolls, but an imposing sequence. This element starts out with a half corkscrew, which enters into a half loop. At the bottom of its lowest point, the track rises back up into a half loop before completing the element with another half corkscrew. This second half corkscrew faces in the opposite direction in which the train enters the inversion. The next similar combo inversion would be the bow tie. Extremely similar to a bat wing, the only major difference here is that the second corkscrew faces the train in the same direction it was facing when it entered the inversion. The final amalgamation of corkscrews and loops is the butterfly. This odd shaped fellow is effectively an Immelman followed by a dive loop where the train leaves the element facing the same way it entered. Acting as a distant cousin to Jojo rolls, we have dive drops. This element takes place right after a lift hill and flips riders upside down with a roll, transitioning into the top half of a half loop. Generally, these take the place of a first drop and are found most commonly on B&M wing coasters. Allow me to introduce you to my two European friends, Norwegian loops and Finnish loops. Norwegian loops act similarly to pretzel loops except they're present on sit-down coasters. These elements see the track rising up into a half roll and then down into a half loop. This is followed by another half loop that levels out at the top with another half roll. A Finnish loop can look very similar to a Norwegian loop. Rather than finishing out with an Immelman, it features a complete vertical loop. I could see these two easily getting confused. Does someone smell something cooking? Is that- Ooh! The pretzel knot! The easiest way to identify a pretzel knot is to look at the entry and exit points. If they cross over one another, like a pretzel, then it's a pretzel knot. If they don't cross over one another, then it's a bat wing. Last but not least, well, actually it might be, is the rollover. Take a vertical loop and interrupt it with an inline twist at the very top, and you have a rollover. These are most commonly found on Vekoma SLCs, hence my enthusiasm for them. These inversions are the hipsters of the coaster world. They're weird for weirdness sake. You see, they're not like other coasters with all those boring loops and corkscrews. These inversions are special. Let's take the bent Cuban 8. Named after an aerial maneuver, this element is present only on one coaster currently. This element is identified when two Immelmans are sequenced one right after another. Next, we have the Cobra Loop. This inversion is like a combination between an inverted top hat and an Immelman. Currently, it can be found on Storm Runner at Hershey Park. Sorry cat lovers, this next element isn't for you. I present to you the Dog Tongue. Found only on Max Force, this is the Banana Roll's irradiated twin. The only main difference is that the coaster exits perpendicular to the direction in which it enters. I know this is sacrilege, but for this next element, we're going to hell. Down in the fires below, we'll find the demonic knot. This element is like an inclined version of a Norwegian loop, but starting and ending with two zero G rolls. Okay, coming back up to the surface, we have the double inverting stall. This element is present only on Untamed at Wallaby Holland and features a zero G roll, which is interrupted as it starts to roll back to level, then reverse rolls back out of the element. I need to pause here for a second. Just in case this is getting a bit difficult to follow along, I know a ton of these inversions have weird names. Simply because of computer-aided design, we are able to shape track in so many different weird ways that it's a wonder roller coaster courses don't look like piles of spaghetti. At least, most of them don't. Somebody touch my spaghetti! So let's get back to it with a Drakenfire dive drop. My goodness, these names. This is currently only found on Steel Curtain at Kennywood and features a drop into a roll that finishes off with a combination of a corkscrew and a twisted dive. Weird, I know. Next, we have a flying snake dive, which is somewhat similar to the last one. 
The only one in existence is found on Stormrunner at Hershey Park and features a heartline roll, then another half roll, which finishes out with a twisting dive. Next, we have the inverted top hat. This element is shaped just like a top hat, but the coaster travels through this element upside down. Okay, this next one is a kickflip? Seriously? Okay, fine, I'll keep going. The kickflip, another unique element found only on a single coaster. This element rides like an Immelman, but has what feels like a partial wave turn at the top, giving an inversion and a buffet of airtime and laterals. How special. You know what this video needs? Something that could really improve it. Something truly special. And a lagoon roll! Yes, perfect. The lagoon roll. Being yet another unique element found on a single coaster, this is simply an element that starts with a barrel roll that rolls left, then is followed by another heartline roll that rolls right. So it sure seems like Max Force and Stormrunner want to compete for the title of being the most... special coaster. This next element is found on Max Force and is the appropriately named Max Dive Loop. This element features an incline which rolls left at the top, then stalls for a moment before rolling right again to 180 degrees and finishes off with a half loop. Think of it like a special dive loop. Yet again, another element found on a single coaster, we have the negative G stall loop. This is a Norwegian loop that has entry and exit points perpendicular from the half loops in the middle of it. Jeez, I sound like a nerd. Are you still hanging in there? Get it? We were just talking about hang time, we could not spare farm. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Next! Okay, so this next element is what would happen if you put an overbank turn on your coaster, but got a bit overzealous with your banking? This would be the overbanked inversion. It's an overbank turn that goes beyond 135 degrees. Up next is the Raven turn. Featured on the multi-dimensional coasters by Arrow and SNS, this element functions similarly to a dive loop, but doesn't involve any rolls. Following this is the reverse cobra roll. This string of elements starts out with a roll, then a turnaround of 180 degrees, before finishing off with another roll. Keeping with the theme of rolls, we have the rollover camelback. This features what starts out with a twisting rise up, which rolls over and levels out at the top of a hill, and then maneuvers into a twisting drop. This element from the side can often look like a camelback. For the hang time lovers out there, we have the saxophone. This could honestly describe the entire layout of these Screaming Squirrel coasters, or just individual parts. It features a straight piece of track that goes into a reversal that results in the coaster being upside down. In a vaguely similar vein, we have the Scorpion Tail. This inversion is featured on one coaster and is a spike that sits upside down, sort of resembling the shape of a scorpion's tail. Moving on, we have the Step Up Underflip. This element is mainly found on coasters built by RMC, and features a zero-g roll that lets out into a diving turn. Next up is the Stinger Lift. This is our first and only inversion that includes a lift hill. This element is a vertical lift hill that transitions into a quarter loop at the very top, leaving riders hanging. And finally, this next inversion is one of the more convoluted ones in my opinion. It features a corkscrew that leads into a turnaround, then another corkscrew, leading into a similar direction to the entry. It's just two corkscrews broken up with a turnaround. Come on guys, did we really have to finish it off with that? I mean, technically we could do the wraparound corkscrew. Wait, no, that's just the Drakenfire dive drop. Well, how about the Zero-G winder? Uh, step up underflip wannabe? Well, okay, okay, then I guess that's it. As you can probably tell, when it comes to identifying inversions, it's basically convoluted. Really convoluted. A lot of these naming schemes come from the same kinds of thought processes that create the names for skating tricks. If it sounds cool, then it fits. Make sure to check out the rest of the videos in my Roller Coasters Explained series to learn everything else you need to know about roller coasters.
Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like and comment below and hit that bell icon. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters, Nathan Martin and Future Collective. $1 a month helps me bring even more content to you guys, and I even have some exclusive content coming, so check it out. Check the description below to find links to the rest of our pages. Thanks for watching the video and ride on, Coaster Maniacs. Thank you.